Okay, um, the second one will be um, Vice President. Do I have any nominations for Vice President? I would like to nominate Liz. <laughs> Look at her cringe. <laughs> I'll second that. You don't have to take it, Liz, if you don't want to. <laughs> Liz, are you too busy for it? I am. Are you? Yes. Okay. Would you, be, would you like to be the vice president? I would like to. Liz is going to be. Withdraw your. Withdraw your. I have to withdraw my. Please. I used to like you, but yes, I'll do that. Okay. <laughs> All right. So then I would like to nominate Brian. I'll second that. We have a second. If it makes you happy. Thanks. Because okay. it sounds like we don't have a battle over someone to be vice president. Uh, Jackie, call the roll. Mr. English. Yes. Ms. Warfel. Yes. Mr. Duran. Yes. Canworthy. Anyone but me? <laughs> okay, that's done. <clears throat> All right. The next thing is the assignment of committees. We have four standing committees. Those are budget personnel, marketing and education, facilities and maintenance, and land and acquisition and development. Um, at this time, I would like to assign Ms. Wolfel and Mr. Weissman to the budget personnel. Ms. Warfel and Mr. DeRunst of Marketing and Education. Mr. English and Mr. Kennedy of Facility Management. And Mr. Kennedy and Mr. English to Land Acquisition and Development. Is everybody okay with those assignments? All right, good. Now, here's the fun one. We have one, and I don't know who wants to do this, and I wasn't going to assign anybody this one. Uh, foundation liaison? Are you support of the foundation? Oh, I guess since I'm, I think I'm still on the foundation. I, I'll do it if you would like. Okay. So be Brian. Can Unless anybody else really wants to do it. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have the. Yeah. You're good. I, I can get you in. No, I'm sure you can. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> now. Is it better? Drew was on part of the master plan committee, so we need to replace him. And I'd like to put two people on the master plan committee. So I'd, I'd like to do that. To do that. Yep. And, I, and I was on it to begin with, so I will maintain. That's good. If that's cool. Cool and cool, all right. Perfect. Okay. So we have reorganized the board. We're good to go. What's the other committee I'm on? Education and? Education and marketing. Marketing. We don't meet real often, but when we do meet, we have committee. Okay, now we can move on to approval of minutes. We got the November minutes this morning or this afternoon. Um, I think that's 27. We haven't seen them in a long time, so that's probably it. Um, I read through them. My memory is like a steel trap. I <laughs> didn't see anything wrong with them. So. We have a motion to approve. I move to approve. We have a motion from Liz. Second. Second from Carl. Any discussions or issues with them? Call the roll, please. Ms. 
Norfolk? Yes. Mr. Durant? Yes. Mr. Canworthy? Yep. Mr. Weissman? Yes. Mr. English? Yes. I'll say yes. Mr. Hollenbeck, you have two foot uh, of files. First of all, I will apologize ahead of time, but the moving of the meeting around has created what I euphemistically call an irreconcilable scheduling conflict. And that's another meeting at 7 o'clock. So I'm going to have to make my two cents worth here and then watch that clock. And I apologize. It's not because I'm not interested in what you're doing. But you know, when I was younger, I had figured out a way to be in two places at one time. But as I'll tell you right now, as you get older, that becomes more difficult to do. And I think I've probably reached the plateau where I have to admit I can't be in two places at one time anymore. But be that as it may, if I can go through my things, and we haven't met for a while, so I've got a couple of things that we need to talk about. First of all, way back in your history, before your time, uh, we went through the process of seeking bids on the three pieces of property that we own uh, that are kind of in a paused phase right now, and we let farmers farm them for us every year. And what I'm going to pass out now is the results of those bids. Uh, and with rare exception, this is pretty much exclusively a matter of who will pay us the most money uh, per acre for utilization of the property. Craig and I opened the bids. This is the analysis of them. There's three pieces of property. There's the Pleasant Township property, the Pine Township property, and the Liberty Township property. Um, the <coughs> Pleasant Township uh, wasn't close. Uh, Wits Ends Farms offered $341 per tillable, tillable acre the next closest was Rota Farms at 310. Um, so it's uh, Craig and my recommendation that we award the Pleasant Township property farming to its end. Pine Township is a little closer. Rota Farms came in at 300 and $209 per tillable acre, and uh, the next one is 306, only three dollars. But again, I. I'm not aware of any reason to do anything with this one other than to give it to the highest bidder. And then Liberty Township, again, Wits Ends Farms, uh, offered $286 per tillable acre, and Murphy Farms offered $240. There were only three bidders on the Liberty Township. Rota Farms came in at $207. So, um, <coughs> Excuse me, Craig and I are recommending tonight that you award um, the three farming leases to the hi highest uh, bidder by way of what they will pay us per tillable acre. At the bottom, you'll see a couple of contingencies that were in the bids. Um, we've tried that in the past, candidly, and it's speculative, and it's better, I think, especially since this is government that we have a firm fixed agreement with people. Um, and so it's our recommendation that Wits End Farms be awarded the Pleasant Township and the Liberty Township acreage farming, and that Rota Farms um, be awarded the Pine Township. I'll answer any questions you may have, but I would ask that the chair uh, entertain a motion to that effect. What I then do is I notify them I have a a written farm lease agreement that we make out for each of them. Uh, they are a little antsy uh, because we are getting uh, the whole world of uh, farming is like everything else. There are supply issues and they have to be purchasing seed and fertilizer and those kinds of things and the prices keep going up and up. So uh, we had hoped to do it in January, but uh, for circumstances beyond our control, we weren't able to have a meeting. So. But this is not excessively late. Uh, we've we've certainly awarded it in February in, in the past. So any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, but that's uh, Craig and my story, and we're sticking with it. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Hollenbeck? Mm -hmm. Mr. 
motion. We'd like to make a motion to accept all three of these bids. I have a motion that we accept all three bids as, as stated. Second. Second. All right. Any more discussion required? Cool. Call it, please. Okay. I will function. Oops, I'm sorry. Call it. Call it. Do the roll. Mr. Durant. Yes. Mr. Kenworthy. Yep. Mr. Weissman. Yes. Mr. English. Yes. Ms. Orkel. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. The second thing on my list uh, that has been delayed, uh, and we're getting to it hopefully tonight, uh, is the entering into a legal services agreement. Somewhat delayed since it started on the first of the of the year. Uh, it is, as my emails have indicated. Identical to what it has been for many years in the past. Uh, it's divided into two components a fixed fee component and an hourly pay component. We have very, very, very rarely used the, the hourly rate component. And I would emphasize that's for matters that are deemed extraordinary by you, not by me. So you decide if it's extraordinary. And so the, the fixed fee part of the agreement is $12,500 a year, and the hourly rate is $140 a year. Dave, how long has it been $12,500 a year? How long has it been $12,500? Oh. Uh, probably years. five or six years. <laughs> okay. I could get that out. I've got all the ones here. Six years. Okay. But you're not proposing to change that. You're just proposing to I'm change sorry, the hour. I, I ran out of the house. I didn't bring my, my hearing aids. You're not proposing to change that. You're proposing no, to I'm change that the, the, the hourly. Um, I don't want to get corny and nostalgic, but uh, I think I said this when we were meeting. I. I was here when this baby was born, okay, literally, uh, when the county council created uh, the whole thing. And uh, it's been such a joy and a pleasure to see this entity grow. But like anything, any human that grows, you are now a teenager. And sometimes you get a little rebellious and you don't necessarily listen all the time, okay? But, uh, be that as it may, uh, it's, I still consider it a privilege and an honor to work with the park board, and uh, it is uh, something that makes me feel when I go home at night that we've accomplished something for the betterment of the quality of the life of the citizens of Porter County. So, uh, assuming you're going to approve it, I <laughs> will ahead of time thank you for that opportunity. Do I have a motion for approval? Uh, I would uh, get uh, last page, paragraph number two. I think we just have a clerical error. Um, whereas the board agreed to turn it 100, it says spelled out 135. In parentheses, it says 140. Yeah. Which one of those values were I'm you sorry, the, the written language didn't get changed. It okay, be it is 140. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I, I'll make the motion. <laughs> Accept this proposal at the 140 an hour with the 12.5 as our standard. I second that, Brian. All right, we have a motion to second. Any other issues with this? All right, go roll. Mr. Genworthy? Yep. Mr. Weissman? Yep. Mr. English? Yep. Ms. Orkel? Yes. Mr. Yes. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I would like three of those signed, and then I'll sign them, and uh, I'll leave one with Jackie. I'll take one, and then we need to get one down to the office. I guess I am. The next thing on my list is a status report on uh, the efforts of a group of people to have a croquet facility uh, at Sunset Hill Farm. Uh, 
I don't have to tell you it has been a roller coaster, an up and down uh, experience. The last two emails I received from David, he strongly hinted at the fact that he had determined that he was not going to be successful in getting the money together that he needed. Um, I'm not going to tell you he told me he was going to quit the challenge, but uh, it sounded awful close to that. Uh, he asked me about the foundation. Sharon isn't here. I referred him to Sharon, and he, Sharon then got in touch with him and told him about the foundation. He personally referenced the fact that he was going to put in $155,000 of his own money into the project as kind of seed money. Unfortunately, nothing grew other than that, really. Uh, and he did reference those monies as potentially being something he would consider giving to the foundation. He also asked about potential involvement uh, in the foundation. So he and Sharon, I think, are talking. And uh, at this point, I think we just keep our powder dry. Uh, I think you did it exactly the right way, and that was hindsight that we said, we'll consider it, but we need you to be fully funded under your budget. Uh, we don't want to get halfway through construction of this. And have the money not be there. And what was fully funded? What would that mean? How much money would fully funded be? I think it was a quarter million. Yeah, I think it was two fifty. Two fifty. Two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And the, the fundraising was just not not there. Okay. Successful. So um, I think we wait and see if it gets, I think being resurrected may be the right way to say, I think it would take a miracle uh, at this juncture, but you never know. Uh, manna from heaven may show up, but he may be funded and we can go back. But at this juncture, it's clearly on the back burner. And I don't intend, unless you tell me otherwise, and I recommend you don't, uh, I don't intend to spend any more time or effort with David uh, unless he comes to me and he got uh, a bank account with $250,000 in it. I think that was one of the things where you were going to click in your special charges. Right. Why did you do that? So let's not do that. It was an experience. Um, the next thing on my list is uh, you probably, some of you who have been around longer, I don't know, maybe just Craig and I. <laughs> Down on the Kankakee, uh, we have a local constituent by the name of Hudson, who uh, we have had some relationships with in the past. Uh, he's done some, or he has said he has done some estate planning that would include us and some acreage down there. Uh, we have done programming down there. There's, a, is it an annual festival? Yeah. And what's it called? Uh, Kiki. Kiki. Oh, no, that's where we got the name for the Kind of where it came down. Um, it's an annual festival that we've sent some staff down to uh, to work some activities. Uh, it got a little bit, well, it got pretty uh, definitive a couple of years ago as to what he intended to do. But then he kind of dropped. I think did he have some health problems. Him and his wife were having health issues. And that kind of slowed him down. Uh, he reappeared here. Jackie went. Oh, I, I don't have the date on, on the top of my head. A but, month or um, six weeks ago? Oh, it's been a few months ago. Okay. Yes, himself, himself and Dr. McAfee and I. A couple of months. I think he just kind of showed up at your office. He, he called, yeah, he, he arranged it with Sharon Kish and Dr. McAfee to come in and, and, and speak to us. So Indicating we met he silo. would like to reactivate it. Um, the way we left it last time, and I believe it is in fact the way we should leave it now, is we asked that his estate planning people get a hold of me and I could find out more about what his intentions are uh, with his estate planning and the land and conveying it. Uh, and then I can bring that back to you and we can kind of reboot this investigation. But uh, 
at this point we haven't heard I haven't heard from him since. No, I haven't. Um and the conversation that we had actually the reason that your name was brought into the conversation was because there's two there's two parcels of land. There's a hundred acres that he wants to donate to the park and then there's another thirty acre parcel that has the buildings on it that he's going to leave to his intentions are to leave to his historical society. So my concern was how did that affect us with the hundred acres being on the other side of that property and if the historical society dissolved would that hundred acre or would that thirty acre go back to us? And he was kind of confused at, at that and wanted to uh, reach out to you and, and have some conversations about that situation. But anyway, I, I bring it up because he has resurfaced uh, and is again indicating <clears throat> that he intends to do things. Uh, as far as I know, he hasn't done them yet, uh, but that when he's interested in doing it, he's been told to contact me and share with me what those thoughts are. Um, I think it's got some real potential uh, as a piece of property that we could manage and adapt into some pretty neat uses. Uh, is it right on the river? I believe it so. Is. In fact, part of the problem is accessing it because it is off, it's right on the river and off, the, it's not on the road. It's a stony Part of the property does need a road because that's, that, that's where the structures are. Is, is that, as I remember when the first, when I met with them, I mean, this has been a while back, but they, they have a home on that property too. Mm -hmm. And that home borders the road north of the Kankakee. And <coughs> part of the discussion was where that would be cut out too. The home would stay within the family, the wife, the life state or what, but there would be access off, I, as I remember the picture, there was access off that county road to the north to the property also. So there were basically two different sets of access into there. But that's, that was, I don't know how many years ago, but that's what I remember of the now, when, we, when, when Jackie called me and said he had reappeared, I, I've had I a file. I went back in there, and you know we're looking at like 2017 and yeah, I had early 2018, I mean, four or five years ago. I thought emails about it. <laughs> well, that's great. He's reappeared then, and in, in this express. He comes and he goes, though. I must say that. Like he's, pass, like he's passing through town and decides he wants to stop <laughs> off. And he does. I mean, it's, it's, it's land, he's. In the 10 years I've been on this board, he's showed up probably, this is the third time, and it's usually in about three or four year, five year increments. Okay, well. He showed up when I first got on the board talking about this, and then the last time, and now, now he, it just, all of a sudden, you don't hear from John, John Hobson other than, you're going to bring porta potties down to my Kiki Fest and run programming and bring this for me and bring that for me. And then two years later, he shows up and says, hey, come on guys, I'm going to be a partner again, and he goes away. So okay. he's kind of flighty, <laughs> to put it mild, in my opinion. And, and that may be true, but you got to give him credit. Oh, I, I do. I mean, I'm not saying I think he's yeah. genuinely interested in just the history of legacy. He's yeah. very serious about the history of that property. Yeah. He's very serious about Absolutely. It. I think it's in our own best interest to develop that relationship. He's very dedicated to what's there. Relationship. And he's done quite a bit of research, and, and, and he's, he's very dedicated to his, his land. I don't hold my breath. Uh, Mr. President, that's the extent of the specific things I have under the attorney report. I just noticed that Hudson is listed as a separate item, so that was kind of a nice segue okay. out of the attorney's report. Uh, and again, I'll hang around as long as I can, and I apologize for the fact that I've got to leave. Okay. All right. The matter is, those folks need me much more than you do. That's bad. <laughs> I feel for them. <laughs> we always need your leadership, Dave. I'm lost without you 90% of the time. Okay, the next thing on the agenda is um, we are restarting our interview process for the superintendent's position. Everybody up here knows that. Um, it's been discussed. We've talked about it. What we need to do now is set. I wrote down some points, and you guys tell me if I get this right how we're going to conduct our preliminary interviews. We have, I believe, five candidates that we have decided we are going to <coughs> call down to our final person. So we, our first preliminary interviews, we have to figure out how many candidates we're going to go down to from there. Are we going to do phone interviews or in person? 
how, who is going to do, who is basically going to be in the room when we interview these people? Um, are we going to use our budget personnel committee? I do know that there's some interest within our elected officials to be in that room too. How many questions we're going to ask them? Because I think we need to ask them all the same questions. That way we all, I mean, um, and then, like I said, how many candidates for a final interview? What are we going to, what are we going to call the five down to? And then after that, we need to discuss, are we going to use kind of the same process for our final candidates? So I am here to take suggestions. I'm here to figure this out so we can get this started. Um, have we identified if the five? We have the five. They have all responded that they're still no, interested? No, we have not spoke to them yet. Okay. We have not been contacted. Okay. Um, we wanted, it was advised to me we needed to get this process in place before we started calling people. So I wanted to, we kind of backed up on it and I'm taking the advice of somebody much wiser than me on this one. So, as opposed to the interview process, um, like I said, I do know that we have an interest by our elected officials to be part of this as observers. Um, I have no problem with that personally. I also want to remind everybody that even though they are observing this, we are an independent board. And the final decision on who gets hired will be by this board and not by our county elected officials. They can have input, but they put us all in these seats. And if they did not put us, trust us to put us in these seats, they shouldn't have done it. I, mean, I don't want to be too direct and glib about it, but we're here, we're their appointees, and it's our job to hire the superintendent. Um, one of the elected officials said one time when they handed us some land, we don't do parks, you guys do parks. So I think that is my opinion of that. I will listen to other opinions, but I just want to get out in front of that because we are an independent board and they throw that in our face constantly. So, um, here's my feelings and you guys can smack me or tell me I'm right, wrong or indifferent. My feelings are Brian and Liz are our budget and personnel committee. The preliminary interviews, how are they handled? should be handled by Brian and Liz with Mr. Hollenbeck in the room to make sure we don't get out over our skis too far to keep us in line. If we do have liaisons from the county, the elected officials, it needs to be the same one for every interview for continuity's sake. We don't need three different people, we don't need the three commissioners, we don't need three or four council people, and it should be <coughs> one, just one, so um, from each one of those groups. Um, Are you saying one commissioner and one We're going to invite one commissioner and one council person. That's all we need in that room, because if we, my, my whole thing with continuity is the part about how we're all going to ask the same ones, the same questions, if we have three different people from either group in there, and they're supposed to be helping us evaluate. If they're not all evaluating, it should be the same person evaluating all the candidates. Because one person's gonna think one way, one person might think another way, and one might, person might think a third way, and that, that ruins the continuity of the whole process. And that's where, I think that's the important thing, is we have to have continuity. Yeah, remove as much bias as possible. Yes, exactly. Um, so that's the first part of the process. Is that agreeable with everybody before I get much farther? I mean, I'd like to make a suggestion or two suggestions. One is that um, if so, maybe the scheduling is based on the schedule availability of the three of us, but that any board member who can make those is able to sit in on the, them as well, uh, because I don't. I think I don't want it to be two board members and two a city councilor and a commissioner. County. Co sorry, county, okay. county council and commissioner. Mm -hmm. um, and I, the second thing is I would 
again encourage us to consider having extend an invitation to Sharon uh, from the foundation because I know that although the relationship between uh, the superintendent and, and the foundation in the past might have been troublesome, it's just it's the same argument for including the council and the commission and that if, if their argument or if people on this board's argument is we want to have a stronger relation, working relationship between our superintendent and those officials, then I would say we also want that stronger relationship between the foundation person uh, in order to get their input. So I, th I see them as, uh, in some ways, similar stakeholders in, in the Parks Department. Do you see that being an observer and then part of the conversation as well after the interview? Well, I think... Like the county officials? So what I would propose is those five that we're interviewing, uh, that those three stakeholders are invited in and our board is there for those. And then uh, we use the standard questions and a rubric and mm -hmm. they're able to fill out that rubric just like we are. And so we have their voices in the room at that stage but that ultimately we make the decision to advance two names and then we have in-person interviews with those two candidates just as the board. So the board would conduct the interview, get the input and thoughts of those who are observing and then the board would make the decision. So the board would conduct phone interviews with the five candidates alongside the council person and the commissioner and the foundation and then get their input, uh, and then the board alone would decide which to come for in-person interviews with the board. And, and you're proposing that any board member that can make the interviews can be part of that as well? I think so, because otherwise it, I mean, two, two board members and Dave, I think and this is a huge decision to make. I, I, I agree with that proposal. Um, okay, so we're going to go down that road. Which now we're, I, I, I might have missed part of that. We're, with the five interviewees, we're going to have the full board as part of that? That's what I was going to ask the question. So I, get, I, I think once available. we get it down to like two, it's available. the last two would be, would be interviewed by the full board or voted yeah. on by the full board. Now, I guess my question is if we put that many people in the room, how many of them are going to be filling out the rubric? Every person in there. So, I, I guess my thing is, is I'm, I'm going to go back to continuity. If, let's just say, I can make it to one of the meetings, and but I can't make the other ones, or I decide, I make that decision to or not to. I'm not sitting there basing my numbers on all of them. I, I, I'm concerned that if, and it, it, hear me out here, if you come to one, one of the interviews but you don't come to another one and you're listening to them and you're thinking, well, this guy's a four, a three, a three, a two, whatever, and the next one shows up, well, you didn't come to it, but everybody else thinks they're a da 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 how, it, just, uh, how does that, I guess I, I guess I see the rubric as being a rubric that's judging that candidate alone, not candidate to candidate, because they're interviewing independently at separate times. But they're, I mean, how do you stay completely neutral? I mean, that, I, I mean honestly, I mean, is, is there an ability where if someone interviews all five of them, they hear one that's, oh, this one, how do you, you think this one's really good, and then you hear the other ones, it's like, well, I really like this one, so I'm not going to, I don't know, I'm just kind of, I'm trying to see, you know, maintain a continuity here. And that's where my thought was, okay, that's, if we want to let, I guess what I'm, where I'm getting to is, what if we look at this way and let the two board members who, who are on, actually on the committee, do the rubric, two elected officials do the rubric, but, but if the third or fourth board member that wants to sit in there, they just observe and don't do the rubric. I, mean, I think the, the benefit of a rubric is 
that you can then average the scores across whoever takes it. So you're, you're taking more inputs better. More inputs better. Exactly. That's, that's my thought. Okay. Uh, and to, to fill the rubric out immediately following the interview prevents a little bit of that kind of comparison that you're talking about, Bob, that you'd want to avoid. Not that at some point we wouldn't be thinking, well, which candidate is stronger, but... At some point you have to do that. Yeah. <laughs> but to get us One to of the team. ways to, and this I'm just throwing this out, one of the ways to level the playing field if we're worried about a numbers game in terms of, you know, how is the candidate going to feel if there are six people standing around? Uh, to use some technology to to live stream the interview or videotape the interview so that that would facilitate people who couldn't be there having an opportunity to, to view the, the the interview itself. And it also would maybe downsize physically the number of people who are staring this candidate down. On the other hand, the candidate might come to the conclusion is, gee, this must be a pretty important job because I got all these people here uh, wanting to talk to me about it. But I, I completely agree, no matter how many people you have, you have, I'm going to go one step farther, you have to ask the same questions. You have to ask them in the same order, too. Don't mix up the order either. So you have a flat situation where they're all put on the same level of questions being asked and when in the process okay. and the duration of it uh, and I've done a lot of this right? um, you have to do all you possibly can if you said it's an hour it, and if the guy or the gal wants to talk and answer one question for 20 minutes so be it but you're going to get an hour and I think that keeps the candidate and the people that are listening to the questions and that's the other thing. I think the same person should ask the questions. The same person should ask the so same questions. So you've got the same time. questions being asked by the same person in the same order uh, that will really help delineating respective candidates. And then give them a time constraint. Make them manage their time. Do we intend to do these five <coughs> interviews in person, on the phone, or Zoom, virtually? I don't know if we have the technology or the ability uh, in, in, within this group to set up Zoom calls. I, I, I don't. I don't. I personally don't have that. Um, does anybody else? Uh, could, I mean, I can, but the... We could, the, do the, we could do one by phone. Yeah, I think the most recent research on biased in interviews says that Zoom interviews are the most biased, that phone interviews are better, okay. and that in-person interviews are good. So my proposal would be that we do phone interviews with the five candidates, and then we select two candidates to come for an in-person interview. Okay. Okay. Um, I. <laughs> if everybody else wants the foundation in that room, that's fine. I have. I, I don't. I, I don't want them to think that. And I. I understand making them part of the process, making them part of the party. I don't want to, I, I've sat through watching that foundation go this way, that way, come in here and act like you're on the board. We're, we give you this money, you guys do good. I, I like I, I, the foundation in us has finally got to a place where we're comfortable, but I don't, I don't want to give them the illusion that they have any <coughs> stay over us at all. I, I really don't. And that's, I know the council, the commissioners, they do. Whether we like it or not, they do. The foundation, they may supply us with money, but I have sat on this board long enough to watch that foundation split in half. I've watched, I've heard them come into meetings and tell us we're doing things wrong. We need to do it this way. We need to do it that way. Why aren't you guys doing this? Why aren't you doing that? We're going to pull your funding. I, I've heard everything from that foundation for years. The last four or five years, four years has gotten a lot, lot, lot better. Maybe five years. So I, 
I think the world of Syracuse, I think the world of a lot of those people on that foundation, but I just don't want to give them any illusion that they have any stay over this board and what we do. Um, that's my opinion. If I think if the board values the foundation's input, then we frame the invitation in a way that states that very thing, that we value your input and your input into the board's ultimate decision on who the next superintendent is going to be, especially if we want to improve the relationship in, in as many ways as we can with not just the county, but with the foundation. Maybe a good starting place to do so. Our board, the commissioners, and the, and the uh, council are county government, and we need to keep county government and 501c3 independent and separate from one another. There has to be distinct lines of delineation. Like Craig was saying, it took us, this board and the foundation, working together over many, 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 many years to get back into a working relationship. I was on both sides of it for, for a long time, and I think where it came in was those lines got blurred in between one another. I don't hey, Dave, you guys, you want Dave to contact you? Five. Can you please contact the five? Okay. Can you please contact the five people we pour down to? I should have worn my hair. <coughs> contact the five people for us. See if they're still okay. interested. I will do that. Okay. Thank you. I don't have anything to tell them in terms of when Just they're going to be interviewed. Ask them. Oh. Make sure they're still interested. And let them know we're going to start setting up interviews. All right. And obviously, whatever role is deemed for me, I'm willing to do it. Okay, I'll let but you I'll, know. I'll, now I'll contact the five and say we're about to proceed with the next step. Please. Thank okay. you. Sorry, I got to leave. Yeah. Sorry, Brian. I didn't, Thank you. I didn't, no, that's okay. I wanted to get that done before you left. Yeah, absolutely. Brian, absolutely. just before you start, I just I just want to let the board know that Sharon actually has, she, she fell, so she's got a boot on her foot and she's looking at surgery, so she, she would have been here, but she's... Okay. She's in a little bit of a distress right now, so just FYI, just went up. Okay. All right, go ahead. No, that, that, that was basically the, the gist of my thing. I, I, what had happened in the past is there was those, those lines got blurred, and everybody was going down the same path, but they to the same goal, but they weren't going down the same path, and sometimes. Uh, like Craig was saying, well, we, we're holding the check. Well, okay. You're a 501c. You can work with us or not based on what your board is saying. We don't go in there and try to tell them what we're doing. And the same way government doesn't need to be melted in with a charitable organization. Because otherwise we can say, well, we got a whole bunch of money from one of our uh, steel mills. Are we going to put the steel mill? Or another one of our foundations that's here in uh, we get a lot of money and through the foundation like from from Anderson some of the other philanthropy you know are we can put everybody in this table but this I, isn't I think any foundation it's the Parks Foundation right so it's very closely aligned in ways that the but steel mill we, we, would be. we, we get, work very closely aligned with a lot of other philanthropic organizations in this county as well I, I think government needs to do what government does and work with the non for profits and a separate entity. And whoever the new superintendent is, they're going to have that's our job is to figure out how they're going to be able to work with so many different entities. And that's the new superintendent's job is to go out there and bring in funds for our projects. But I think government needs to be separate from non profits. That's just my take on it. Carl, I'm going to put you on a hot seat. <laughs> My short time and involvement, Sharon's been very pleasant to deal with and not, inter in my opinion, not interfering whatsoever, just having opinions and, uh, you know, helping us out where, where they're able to. I, I don't know personally that it would hurt to have, to have her in the room, quite honestly. That's, again, my opinion, not, not, not the separation of, of church and state like we're talking about, but that's, you know, that's my thoughts on that. She's, in my time here, she's always been very gracious and very nice uh, and easy to deal with. So I can't see where that would change. Um, if, if 
we or we could even offer up if they have a certain question that they would like to ask. We'd be more than happy to put that on there. I just don't think that they need to have a a vote on that. I, I don't think. I don't think they would. It's not a vote. Not a vote. Not a vote. In the in the room. How are we going to let them steal up the rubric? Sure, because that tells us more than them. I think. I mean, the rubric is a, a guideline to help us say the least bias, right? I'm so just saying how we, we would want to apply that to anyone gonna, in the room. If we, if we weight the rubrics, are we going to like? You and going to be more important. Well, just, just because what the other ones think. I, I'm just trying to. No, what, what, we're, we're throwing a lot of people. I under think to put you at, at ease, Craig, is that just because she filled out a rubric, which would then essentially give us her opinion on the candidates, doesn't mean that that rubric would then be a vote that would be factored into the the ultimate calculation. It's just her opinion in the same rubric form that we're all doing for consistency, but it doesn't factor in as a a vote, so to speak, or part of the equation. It's for us to take into consideration her perspective. So we still have the independence of the final choice. It's not mixed in with our rubrics for a final score. Okay, then let's go down this road. For consistency, just Sharon, no one else. From one the park board? One person from the foundation. From the foundation. One, no one else. Yep. Yes. They can't, okay. I can't make it, I'm sending so-and-so. Sure. Right. Absolutely. Same, same, same thing as council and commission. Yes. Okay. Consistency. Okay, I just want to. Yep. In case we run down that road, because it sounds like it's three to two here, and then gonna... yeah, I think that's fair. Okay. Um, Brian, you guys are together. This is this is it a, yeah, a democratic process? I, no, I'm always. I I thought we were talking about having them do actually have a vote. We two there on the five down to two. If, if that's not the case, I'm always open to somebody else's opinion and point of view. That's much, not a problem. Much like right, that. So we're good? You're good then? Oh, absolutely. Okay, absolutely. all right, so we're good with that. That, 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 that changed the whole, okay. the whole thought not, process. Yeah, that's why, we're, ta vote that's why we're talking about part. this, because yep. this is a complicated thing. This is not... And everybody uses the same tool. It can be graded on the same level yep. each particular time. Okay. So. Now, I sent out a thing today. I'm sorry, I, it was late. Liz has worked on it. I'm not going to ask anything beyond this. Liz has offered, if anybody has some questions that are not on that, that they would like to ask, please submit them to her. But how many questions are we going to limit ourselves to? If we're going to do this for an hour, we have to limit ourselves. We can't go in there with 20 questions. We no, have to either say, I think the, the list right now has 10 on it. 10, and I think it's a fair number. I know the ones I sent out, some of them have 14 on it. Um, and depending on their responses, depends on how many you get to. Eight to ten, yeah. somewhere in there, would, that will give the time management right. issue. Especially the, the with the time, with the hour period, you know, the so, hour and stuff. So you guys want to say ten questions? Yes. I think you better go armed with enough questions to see you through a reasonably an hour. I think ten, I think ten is, is reasonable. Yeah. Ten to six minute question. And some are going to be one minute answers. Some could be ten minute answers, okay. depending on complexity of the question. Okay. There's a couple of questions that are fairly complex. Right. Now, who's going to ask the questions, Brian and Liz? Uh, I believe, well, it would, if we're going you to guys have can somebody, if we're going to have one member of oh. the council and commissioners, they can ask just these two? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fine. We can do that too. That way, consistency, you guys will be at every interview. If the commissioner doesn't show up, the council person doesn't show up, the foundation person doesn't show up, we stay consistent. Okay. You guys good with that? I think for phone interviews too, it's helpful to just have two people asking questions. So yeah. yeah. All right. So I'm sorry about all this, guys. It's good to work it through. All right. We're going to go down to two. And I recommend not an hour long, but uh, either 45 minutes or 50 minutes, because if we end up one evening with them back to back, then it gives us time to. You guys could the call. 45 minutes because you get time to take a drink, go to the bathroom. Yes. 45 minutes, okay? All right, now, I guess the final thing was we're going to use the same format except for in person for the final interview. And maybe an hour for those. Maybe an hour. Yeah. Same format, same. Yeah. Okay. 
do we want to go into this definitively saying we're going to narrow it down to two, or do we want to interview the five and potentially say we'd like to see three people in person, or do we want to say before you're only going to do two? Let's go to two. I think three gets deep. Okay. You guys okay with two? two? Right. Let's go down to two. All right, guys, I think we have our interview process put together. Dave will be calling them. Um, what we're going to have to figure out is availability for everybody. Um, I'll reach out to the council. Brian, you got the commissioners? Yeah, I'll, I'll call uh, Commissioner Secretary tomorrow. Okay. Offer the, the invite. Okay. We'll start so. getting a few dates together that. All right. See what we can do. All right. So I, I have a question, Craig. Sure. I know this is not a political issue, but for optics, do we want to balance a Democratic and Republican commissioner and council person? Is that something? It's a, that it's a lot of availability. Okay. Um, is what I would say. I don't know. We can. What I just whoever they want to send is fine. We okay. have liaisons in the park for the. Okay. And I know, and I believe. I don't know. For the council, I know we have liaisons for the park. I do not know if the commissioners have a liaison or not. If they, it used to be um, Laura Brennan. They do. But I don't know who it is now. It used to be Laura. Okay. I don't know since they've reorganized if it's Jim. I'm sure it's not Jeff. So I don't know which one's which. But I don't. I don't know off the top of my head. For I don't sure, know. But I, I'm. I'm pretty sure most. Most. Laura used to be the one that answered the phone call when I called her. Yeah. So are we going to invite a one specifically from each county uh, council and commissioners, or are we going to invite them to send one, to offer one up? Are we specifically saying, could so-and-so council person, or just asking them to offer one I up? am going to call Mr. Jessen tomorrow. Okay. What, he's the one I've been dealing with with this, and he's the one who's been pushing. Get this done, get this done, get this done. Okay. So I'll call and talk to him and see what he... Okay. Take what his take is on it, what he thinks, and if he thinks he wants to come, or whoever else is the liaison. I know I think Sylvia is one of them. I think Britton is the other one, whichever one. He, I'll talk to him since he's vice president. And he's the one I deal with, so. Okay. He's the one who answers the phone line for some of the things. Um, but I will take care of that. I'll, like I say, I'll reach out. I'll just have a blanket invite, and whoever the commissioner is picked to be their liaison rep, that's going to be up to them. Okay. All right. Well, that ended, that ends that part of this issue. Um, yeah. The Hobson property we did. Jackie staff report. Um, okay. So <laughs> I will keep that. it. I will keep it brief then. <laughs> so there's been a lot of discussion of, of things. Um, I, I'm not going to go through every bullet point that we have on here. If there's anything anybody wants to to um, you know discuss out right. Uh, you know, let me know, but um, uh, we talked about the flagpole amongst ourselves a little bit. Um, that's exciting, I think. It's, it's, it's a, a nice um, addition to the silo, and uh, um, uh, Councilman Sims is involved in that and is going to bring uh, a, a, a nice new flag, and I did actually as a side note, um, ask facilities to see if we couldn't get a county flag. I spoke to Mr. Sims, and we're going to put a county flag on the same pole with the United States flag. So that's happening the 29th of March. So if everyone wants to stop in at 5:30, and um, he's going to have some refreshments available to come and, and watch the flag. Are they taking right. the little pole down? Uh, no, I don't think we're going to remove any of the other poles. They're just going to. Where are they going to put it? I'm sorry? Where are they going to put the flag? It's right outside the, the new pole. The new pole, yeah. Right outside the uh, silo. Right outside the door? Yeah. So they're not going to put it where the other flag is? No, right? no, okay. no. Uh -uh. no it's, there's a new, a new spot for it all on its own. Okay. And they, it's yeah. coming right. soon, coming to a theater near you. Um, so that's going to happen in March. And like you said, hopefully everybody gets to make it and, and see the vets come out and, and um, dedicate that flag. Uh, I'll go through the fiber optic. Um, year end, we didn't get the invoice in time for us to be able to uh, get things started as soon as, as I would have liked to have. Um, Mr. Carroll kind of uh, didn't get me the information that I needed right away. So that's on the schedule for this year. And as soon as the weather breaks, 
they've got us um, set up. Sharon's already sent down to the foundation for the monies to be released and the fiber optic project should go forward um, shortly. Uh, uh, not on here, um, but I did want to mention as far as grants, I, I have an exciting addition to to our um, our programming. We're looking into a grant to get a, a um, archery range, a permanent archery range for the kids. I, I really kind of had uh, an idea of trying to put something out at Brookdale. I wasn't sure exactly where all of that was happening. So, um, you know, since the board has other ideas about those areas, uh, we still want to do that. Um, we'll have to run that through the land acquisition. Uh, yeah. If we're going to do any kind of major renovation in any of our property or put something up that, we'll have to. Well, there, there, yeah, there are there are grants available. The DNR is very excited about the prospect of us putting an archery range out there because there aren't many in the area. We've got a big following um, with our programming out at Sunset. The kids in camp really enjoy it. It's growing. It's, it's really gaining a lot of momentum and popularity. So uh, when I saw that that was available, I reached out and we're looking into that. And um, what, you know, as of this, it's just it was just okay, nice that we we're remember that. Right, right. Could, could Sunset be a location for an archery range? Definitely. Um, if it was something that we can do, uh, I just wanted to kind of throw it out there and let the board know what my, you know, what our thoughts were. I know things are changing, so this was just something that that uh, since we had the program and all of our all of our camp members are or our camp uh, our naturalists are getting certified to instruct. So um, you know, right now they're they're it's a good possibility that we would be able to do something really nice with that situation. So I just kind of move forward a little bit on that and, and inquiring about the grants and, and to see where we could go with it. So that's, that's um, something that we're kind of looking into, but not, you know, there's no, nothing in stone. Um, uh, oh, the master plan. Um, Taylor worked her tail off, so to speak and went through um, the survey process, got it out out to the community, and we got um, several responses, and actually uh, got it in and met the deadline so that the master plan could stay on track. Now the project is a little bit bigger, so I'm gonna have to hand it off to a committee and you know, look into it. Um, the deadline for that is April 15th, so that's something that you know, the board might want to expedite a little bit. Um, How uh, many responses did you get? How many? Yes. Well, Taylor would have all of that information, enough to, to send it down to, to state. We were pushing just to get it done. I, I'm just curious because I, I, with consultants, yes, Becky? I think we got over 100. Yeah. I think she said we got over 100. It may, it may have been. Because I, I remember what the number, there's a, it's, for as many people that live in this community, what they consider a good cross section is absolutely incredible. How low a number uh, it is. Yeah. And that's why I was curious how many, because I remember hearing numbers like two and 300 they consider out of a population of 150,000 people it could be a good cross section of the community. So that's why I was curious. Yeah, there was a lot of mention of South County. What was it? There was a lot of mention of South County. <laughs> so, um, so I just wanted to let the board know that we did meet that deadline, okay, and well, um, you. you know it is something that we we did get feedback from the from the DNR, and he gave us bullet points and things that we need to look at and and um, notes on how what they would like to see, you know. But um, as I stated, it's it's a pretty good site project, so uh, the committee may want to sit down with Taylor and I and and go through whatever updates you want to add to that. Uh, camp programming is is taken off like a bullet. Um, it's already full. We have a waiting list that we we can't possibly, you know, take any more kids in. So we're Yay. contemplating closing the uh, registration because we just don't have the staff available to be able to open it up, you know, another week. And we want to take it slow now that we're all kind of on our own. Are the are the numbers? what they were last summer? I mean, are we keeping at that, or are you going like what it was prior to the summer of 20? Um, we're taking it at 60. We went at 80, and we had an extra week 
Last year, so she's going 60 this year. You pushed it up? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, and this yeah. is all a result of what I was I was telling Liz about our restructure, mm -hmm. you know, in, in staffing. Yeah. Um, since we didn't have Nicole any longer, and um, we weren't quite sure where you know where things were going to land uh, with the openings and the full time yeah. positions and stuff. So I talked to Becky, and, and in agreement, since she's already available and she has all her programs, it just made sense for her to take on the camp. Um, portion of that also. So she's kind of the background person who's, who's helping us put on, um, you know, the registrations and if people have questions so that the staff that's on site can actually hands-on work and they don't have to worry about talking to the parents and all that, all of, all of that. So Becky's been instrumental. That's why I'm not quite as, as you know, up to date on a lot of what's going on is because I, hand, I handed it off to, to Becky so that her and Lisa and the other staff members could get done what they needed to do. And Becky's amazing at, at working with her cross country and track group. So it just, it, it fit in so well and she's doing an awesome job. I mean, I can't, I can't say enough about how they've stepped up and, and took control and, and things are moving in a good direction. And our next phase is to get the counselors on staff. And in, and in that, we've also opened up, um, it's called Handshake. I think you're probably familiar with it. Um, we, we're trying to get some more college students interns, um, kind of, uh, not only are they going to be counselors for the summer that are on payroll, but we're also looking for people that can come in and for credit through their college courses can work with us. So we have more hands on deck, um, not as much, uh, expense and the kids, the kids, let's see, um, the, the young adults that we bring in, um, have amazing opportunities to either figure out if this is the career they want to go into working with kids, you know, rather than getting in the middle of it and then, you know, so it's, and we talked to Ivy Tech, we've got, we've got Purdue, we've got all that, the, that open portal and we're going to start diving into that. Um, Jackie? Sure. I might recommend that you reach out to the schools because there are a lot of groups like the International Baccalaureate uh, and um, National Honor Society that need service hours and they look for opportunities to volunteer in the community. You might really be able to get a lot of great young adults uh, to volunteer. And I'm glad you brought that up because that's exactly what I was looking at. I really wanted to do more of an interactive situation with the colleges and the students that can hands-on come in. And what a learning experience. I mean, it was amazing that uh, the, the opportunity that everybody, you know, can, can either provide or be provided. I, I, um, I was really excited to see if we could do that. Um, I wanted to kind of intermingle that also with our, with our animal program. So I, I'm trying to find a vet tech group that we can uh, interact with so that they can come out and help with the animals. And again, it's an internship program that I'm trying to set up with the college students and move forward on that. So I'm thinking that in, in that way, I think it's just, I don't see any negatives behind it. I just don't. So we're, we're pushing forward and trying to get that set in, in place and working with the colleges. And, and thank you, Robert. If you could email me, you know, that so that we can you bet. we can kind of dip into that also. That would be great. Okay. So, um, you know, that being said, there's other things that I talked to you, Liz, about. I'm not sure where we're going to go with that since there's changes being made, but I would really, I would really like to see something like that happen. But, you know, that's another story for another day. Um, Katie's got her events all together. She's working really hard and, and diligent in bringing us new activities. Uh, we're trying to kind of downsize the events a little bit, concentrate more on winter lights. Um, the drive through seems to be actually more po We had absolutely no feedback on the Winter Lights Festival. I was waiting for the phone calls to come in. There really weren't any. But the people were calling with very positive feedback about the Winter Lights drive through So it's less expensive. The cost factor to the, to the festivals is phenomenal. The labor, you know, it was late. They're labor intensive. We've got part-time people that have to adjust their schedules. So we kind of laid back on those. 
and while having smaller activities, so we figured more activity at the park, less expense for the count for for the system, and um, the staff isn't you know beat to death and working late hours and things like that. And it's worked out perfectly. I mean, we were really excited about the way things were moving in a good direction with with the changes that we're we're, we're implementing right now. Um, so another thing is uh, Taylor. I can't say enough about this kid. I mean, she's really she's really uh, pushed the limits on. She's going outside her job function. She's stepping up majorly. Um, she she has we've she's cross trained on most uh, on all of the rentals and events, so she can step in. You know, when when someone is is uh, unable to do you know that, or she can you know help out because she already knows you know everything about that. So she's really been an all-around asset to uh, where we're at right now. So, um, you know, I, I just want to send a shout out to her. And um, uh, let's see. I think those are the major things that I wanted to talk about. Just because I wanted, I was, I'm really excited about the the interaction with the college students, the way that you know we've restructured ourselves. Um, and uh, again, like I said, hopefully with what you know you and I were discussing Liz that's something that the board would consider um, happening because I think it's really it would really do us a lot of good so um, that's it that's my report unless there's anything anyone would like to ask or nope okay thank you um, before we go on to the NIPA report um, there's, I asked for something, and thank you, Jackie, for getting this information together after about a year and a half of asking for it. Um, now, Craig, there is there is other information I got from Matt Brown. There are the Smith property. Um, well, I, we'll start here. I, we'll just let, I didn't add that in because I... No, this is it, enough for right now. It wasn't requested, so... Um, yeah, this is enough to chew on. Um, here... To say I'm disappointed in finding out we've got $30,000 of the work that needs to be done to a building that I've been asking about for a year and a half is, uh, would be an understatement. Jackie, I know this isn't your fault. I don't think I'm going to miss at you in any way. I've been asking for these reports for a year and a half for this reason. Um, we now have a building that was occupied by one of our employees that requires 30,000 plus work, work, worth worth of work to make it habitable so we can even rent the damn thing. We don't have 30 grand kids. That money doesn't exist. So, we have kind of two choices here as far as I'm concerned. Well, we got three. We can tear it down. We can sell it. Or we can let it sit and continue to rock where it sits. Now, these estimates for this, and that's the 33 plus grade you're talking about, is this, which property is this? Is Brookdale? Well, Brookdale is the $4,500 for gutters, 10 grand for windows, 16 grand for roof. Okay, but that's, that's Brookdale. That's Brookdale. Okay. Then another $2,500 and almost 80 hours of labor for miscellaneous. Miscellaneous, plus the chimney's not on here. That's falling in. Okay. Which is probably another three or four grand. Right, that's what I assume this is. So, I don't want to say we're between a rock and a hard place, but we are, we're in a corner. Well, what would our vision be for this home on this property, even if it was repaired? Would we look would to, be, would to, rent rental it, property. to rent it out it for rental ongoing property. revenue? To generate revenue. Okay. Um, we are no longer in the housing business. We got out of that. We don't put any, we don't, we, it was originally the superintendent's home. And the county pretty well put it right to our, right in our face, get out of the housing business. That's why they increased our ability for we can pay our superintendent. So, we no longer need the buildings for that. I am going to ask the board for permission to have a marketing survey done on that house. I gave you all a piece of paper with basically a lot that I think we should would possibly sell it with. 
Um, the other part about, and I, I don't know what it's worth. I really don't. I'm, I'd like to find out, and then we can make an informed decision on whether or not we want to divest ourselves of this bill. Um, we could take the money, and of course we'd have to have a fund set up by the commissioners, but we could use it for many other things. I mean, that, even if it's only $150,000, that's $150,000. We don't have it. I mean, we haven't got a new vehicle for the parks in 10 years. Last time we bought something was a Kubota, and that was eight years ago. Well, you, know what you, want <laughs> you want the pond? Can I come and talk? What? Can you come and talk? I have some information you'd like. You have information I want? I'll never be fine. He was more about the parks. For those that do not know, my, my name is Matt Houghton, and I worked for the park from 2000 to 2014. I was a park manager for seven years. In 2014, I did a complete audit of all the buildings. All the things that were listed were on this. I gave it to Walter Linkos. He says, thank you, and it went to a file. You've had this information. Matt Brown's had it the whole time. Well, that's a kick in the ass, ain't it? Um, <laughs> it was actually made for a park board meeting and never was presented. Matt, thank you. <laughs> There's also a complete inventory of all the equipment, when it was purchased, and what we paid for it. Look at that. It just scanned into something. They already have it on file. Do you have this thing? Do you know? I'm just it's asking. Done. Matt Brown probably has it. Okay. Well, we now have it as a board. I will scan this tomorrow at work, and I will email a copy to every one of you. I'll let me give you a little more information on the trucks. Okay. It's been a... It's, it's 2004. Is the last truck we bought. I did... Craig, just to know, I didn't know... She did not know, probably. I oh, I, not. Walter, Walter, Walter Linkos... None of this... Walter Linkos knew and he dropped the ball. I, I'm not, not everybody understands. Jackie, I'm not throwing anything to <laughs> away. This is... Yeah, this is way before this you. This is way before you. This, these houses This was January of 2014, not you. <laughs> oh. In 2005, we were using our personal vehicles to transport the mowers to all the parks. The county vehicles we had were not roadworthy. We went to the county council. We had a PowerPoint presentation. And the late, great Bob Poprod said, the hell I wouldn't let my employees drive these goddamn vehicles. <laughs> and they gave us money to buy two trucks. That was in 2005. Those two trucks are still in service. When I started the parks department in 2000, we were driving very old, unsafe vehicles. You're almost there again. Your newest vehicle is a 2009 dump truck. You're still running a 1993 dump truck the Parks Department started with, including a John Deere track they bought in 1991. You can put that in the steam show. <laughs> it's old enough. Just, in order to maintain the parks you have, you need the equipment. And the equipment does not get newer. You have high school kids run them, you have, and they beat the hell out of them. Your mowers, Ed Melendez bought, except one. Just letting you know. I'm very passionate about Sunset Hill. It was my baby, and when I left, I cried. I literally cried, but I had to move on. Good luck. Pick a superintendent that has passion. That's my suggestion. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Okay, well, now we are, hmm. okay, guys, um, that was less than, I told Walker in 2012 to help me with Well, I'm going to sit right up here and say I'm surprised. Um, yes, can we get an estimate of what the property is worth? That's what I'm going to yeah. Right. Oh. Absolutely. Bob Collinback, Ruth Dale with Bob's money. That I think we're locked in. You're seated. But I don't know if there's a lot of money involved with it. Yeah, we'll need to verify that. See if it's sellable. All proportionate, anyway. You're going to end up paying it now? Um.
My suggestion would tear it down, give a brand new septic system, put a bathroom right there, all the in, all the in. Well, we ain't got the money for that either. <laughs> It'll be great. All right. Okay, um, the other one I would like to talk about is do a market study on the Pine Township property. And that maybe even, I mean, <laughs> I'm absolutely flabbergasted right now. Um, we are not good landlords, obviously. So maybe we even look at 700. Down some 700. Let's see what. <laughs> Why, you're done talking. Um, how, many, how many acres is Pine Township? Pine Township is about 63. Okay. There's no structures on that, is there? No, it's farm ground. It was bought with seed up money. It was with prison property. The, pres the past superintendent said it has absolutely no ecological value. There's nothing special about it, except for it borders the Little Calumet River. And if that becomes a concern, we could cut a, a 50 or 100 foot easement off of it, and we would just yeah, so 60 keep three. Yeah, something. I mean, we could do that. But if that's concerned about ecologically maintaining the Calumet River, then well, so that's something we can talk about. But if you guys will give me permission to do that, I will look into these things and have it ready for the March meeting. Do we need to make a motion? Uh, or no, just say yes. Okay, we can make a, someone needs to make a motion, I'm asking. Now move. <laughs> all right, the motion. And, and I'll second. Okay. All right, the motion is to do a market study of the Brookdale home, the 700 house home, and the Pine Township property. Yep. Okay. Uh, vote, please. Second. Please. Mr. Weissman? Yes. Mr. English? Yes. Ms. Warfel? Yes. Mr. Canworthy? Yes. Yeah. All right, are you here for NIPA too, Matt, or are you just here to stir the water? Oh, I retired from NIPA to stir the water. Okay, <laughs> thank you. All right. He's on. <laughs> Give me on Garden Railroad, please. Well, I want to report that uh, I'm sure some of you know that Dave Ransom passed yeah. away. Yes, we do, and Very our condolences. How close are you? Huh? How close are you? Right now, in cash, right now, we're halfway there. How much are you trying to raise? Right now, I got another four grand possibly coming in. And right now, that, by the old estimate, that would have covered it. But in two years since Dave got yeah. an estimate, we're probably going to go up two, three grand probably, or more. So. What is the cost of the fence, do you think, right now? Right now, I'm thinking it's going to be about 11 to 12. So you think you've got six? Huh? You think you've got 6,000 then? I think we're going to have 6,000. Okay. Well, we've got almost six right now. Yeah. Okay. Right? But I um, just sent out for a grant today for another three. So. Okay. That'll just keep us informed, maybe. But we're working on it. Okay. Thank you. We're going to be open in about another month and a half, hopefully. Yeah, it was cool watching the steam engines run. Mm -hmm. We're working been, on it. Yeah. They were at the steam show, they were on those little steam engines. That's pretty neat. Yeah. And some of that. So. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, looks like we don't have to worry about the Northwest Indiana Croquet Association. They seem to have floundered. Parks Foundation? No? Anybody want to say anything besides Matt? Come on, Matt. <laughs> I would. I would. Can I make a public comment, even though I'm on the board? 
you can make a comment anytime you want. Well, I, I just wanted to take a minute to thank the county council for appointing me to the parks board. I'm really grateful and I'm excited to be part of it. And I wanted to thank the board itself for your warm professional welcome that you've extended to me. Uh, I've always felt blessed to live in Porter County in part because of our parks. National park now, right? State parks, great city parks. You got to get into all of them now. County parks. So I'm, I'm looking forward to being part of the board going forward, uh, expanding our footprint and the opportunities that we provide to the people of Porter County. So thank you very much. All right. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank, welcome to the board. Thank you. Careful what you wish for. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I hope you guys know Well, that so concludes our, what is this, February meetings? It is. Um, please keep us all informed on moving forward with our interview process. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming, and uh, good night and be safe.